Hello, and welcome to Juniper Learning Bytes. My name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer with the Juniper Educational Services Department. And today we are going to discuss Junospace Fabric. All right, first, what is Junospace Fabric? Well, Junospace Fabric, also known as Junospace Cluster, those two terms are very interchangeable, is really a solution to scale uh, for scalability and high availability. Up to six nodes in a fabric, we can combine the virtual appliance or the hardware appliance. It's a great solution to provide this high availability and scalability. All right, so today we're going to talk about clustering and walk through the process of clustering two Juno Space nodes. On the diagram here, we have node one and node two. They're going to be using only Ethernet zero. Ethernet three is not going to be used in this example. And then we have a management station. We are going to be on that management station configuring node one and node two. So let's jump into the nodes. There's, uh, there's node one. And we have to log in. This is a brand new image, nothing done to it. Log in with the default credentials, admin and ABC123. We have to enter that password again. And then we have to create a new password. Oh, I messed up on the passwords. All right, I uh, got it that time. And uh, we've got to enter an IP address for the interface for Ethernet 0 and 98. Subnet mask, we'll just give it a slash 24. Default gateway. Give it the default. Give it the name server. Uh, we will say no here because we're only using Ethernet zero. And this next line is what I want you to pay attention to. Will this Juno space system be added to an existing cluster? For node one, it's always no. Because what happens is we say no here and node one becomes its own cluster, its own fabric. It's a fabric of one node ready to accept other nodes. So we'll say no here. Then we'll enter the web GUI IP address. Now this IP address is, is what is used for the VIF, the virtual IP address. So this is going to be the virtual IP for the entire cluster. Now we won't worry about an NTP server. Then we'll enter a name for this node. We'll just call this node 1, very generic. And then enter the uh, maintenance mode password. All right, so now we can see the results. Uh, what I want you to pay attention to is this line. Create as first node or standalone. This is going to be node 1. This is what we want. We want it as the first node. It's not going to be standalone. We're going to add node 2. And so we're ready to go. We'll apply those changes. Reloads the database and reboots the image. So let's jump to node 2. Enter the default credentials. Enter the password again. New password. Okay, we updated that. We enter in the IP address. This course is going to be different than Node 1. Node 2 is going to have a different IP address for Ethernet 0. Specify .99. Subnet address, we want this to be the same as Node 1. Goes without saying. And then we're going to enter the same uh, default gateway. Going to give it the same uh, DNS server. And then again, we're not using Ethernet 3, so we're going to say no here. Now this is different. We do want to add node 2 to an existing cluster. That's going to be node 1's cluster. So let's do that. We'll say yes. And uh, that's all we have to do. All the other configuration parameters, node 2 is going to inherit from node 1 when we add node 2 to the fabric or the cluster. And as you can see here with this line, we can see that the node is going to be added to the existing cluster. That's exactly what we want. We'll apply those changes. The database is going to be going to reload and reboot. Uh, you can see from node one that 
it is uh, looks like it's ready to go, but it's really not. The CLI is back. You could run commands here, but the web interface, the GUI interface, is not ready. It's going to take about 10 to 15 minutes uh, for that interface to be fully up and fully ready for both of them. So we're going to have to wait around for a while for everything to be completely ready to go. All right. Now that the uh, two nodes have been given the time to reboot and ready to go, we can get into the GUI. So here's the GUI. I've already logged into it and we have three options. Do service insight, service now, and platform. Just the basic applications. We want to go to, the, go to the platform application, which is actually the network application platform. And uh, what we'll want to do there is go to administration, uh, manage fabric, and then we can see there's node 1 here. See with node 1 that uh, everything looks good. It's the master. It owns the VIP. Uh, it only sees itself in the cluster. It's what we expect right now. Let's go ahead and add a fabric. Let's name this node 2. If, if you recall, we didn't uh, name the node when we set it up through the console. So we na we're naming it here. Then we have to give the IP address that we assign to the Ethernet 0 interface. And we'll go ahead and add that. And it looks like we have an error. It says that new node, node 2, does not have enough disk space. And what is actually happening there is, as I referred to earlier, this is a, those images were brand new, nothing done to them. And so we actually need more disk space on node 2. The virtual image only comes with uh, a virtual hard drive that has about three and some odd, three and a half about gigs of space. That's not enough. We need more. Uh, it's recommended that you at least do 40. More is better. 40 gigs, that is. More is better. And so what you have to do in this instance is you have to add a new virtual hard drive. However, we've actually, or before, beforehand, I actually added a virtual hard drive. And so what we have to do now is we have to expand the virtual hard drive or expand the space on node 1, or excuse me, node 2. And you might have noticed that we didn't do this on node 1. Uh, for the, the sake of time, we're not going to do that. However, if you have, uh, if you're running this in your network, if you're running space in your network, it's recommended that you do this with every node, that you expand the hard disk size because uh, it, there's not going to be a lot of room for logs or other applications. And so here we are. We need to select option 5 to expand the VM drive size. And it gives you a warning saying performance is going to be significantly slowed. We'll just say yes. And we're going to have to enter the administrator password. And this is not the maintenance mode password. It's the administrator password. All right, now that we've given the uh, space image uh, or the space appliance enough time to uh, expand the hard drive to that extra virtual hard drive that was added, uh, we're re we're, we are ready to add it through the GUI again. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll click the Add button. As you can see, the space device, this is Node 1, who currently owns the VIP, so we're actually in Node 1 right now, it's thinking. It didn't give us a reject message right away or a failure message. This is a good sign. And now that things have started, we, it started a job for it. And we can see the job ID here. And what we can do is we can click on the job ID and we're taken to uh, the Manage Jobs workspace. And in the Manage Jobs workspace, we can see the progress of the job. And this is going to take a few minutes as well to actually go through this entire process to add the node completely. All right, as you can see from the output, the job has progressed to 100% and it's complete. Let's go to the administration workspace, then the manage fabric workspace to examine the nodes. As you can see, node 1 and node 2 are present. Examining the details of node 1 shows it's up and that it is the master, that it owns the VIP, and that we have another member in the cluster member IPs field. Dot .98 is node 1, dot .99 is node 2. Examining the details of node 2 provides additional information. 
you can see that node 2 is up and that it is not it is not the master and it does not own the VIP and that's exactly what we expect to see we currently have a functioning and working uh, Juno space fabric that contains two nodes all right that brings us to the end of the Juno space fabric learning byte in this learning byte we did a general overview of Juno space fabric and we also showed how to take two nodes, two Juno space nodes, and combine them into a single Juno space fabric. So I hope that this learning byte will help you in your day-to-day -day work. And as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.